Hey, we are continuing with What is Saving Faith by Gordon Clark. In this video, we're going to discuss the issue of reliance. We're going to define the term reliance. And we're going to guard against a category error, which is an error of taking what matters, what, what belongs in the, in the category of objective beliefs, and trying to turn it into an additional element in the subjective mental act of believing. And the scripture that we're going to be using today will be from James chapter 2, verse 19. And the Word of God says, You believe that there is one God. Good! Even the demons believe that, and shudder. Now the great Puritan theologian Thomas Manton uh, said that this verse shows that the definition of the word faith, the subjective mental act of believing, necessarily includes a third element in addition to understanding and assent, and this third element he called fiducia, uh, which in English we would say is reliance or trust. And the way that Manton reasoned is this. He said, well, the demons, they didn't have reliance, therefore they weren't saved, whereas the Christians did have reliance and they were saved. So this proves that we must have this third element in the subjective mental act. But now here, Clark charges Manton with a logical error, a logical blunder. He says, rather than showing that the definition of the verb believing of which the, this is the gerund, the, the, the word faith, the subjective faith is just the gerund of the verb believing, uh, it, it, rather than showing that it necessarily includes the additional element of reliance, James 2.19 shows just the opposite. Because here we see the Greek verb, pistio, being used in a context where demons were not relying on God. So this shows that, the, that pistio is not narrowly defined only in those contexts where reliance is present. So it proves that the, the word pistio has a broader definition, not this narrow definition. And remember, the more terms you add to a defi definition, the narrower the definition uh, gets. So... Um, and remember we, how we had discussed in the first video that pistillo, of which, you know, believing is the gerund, uh, of, of which, the, you know, faith is the gerund, it is used in the Bible in many different contexts. Saving faith is only one context. But pistillo was also used where unregenerate Pharisees believed in a lie. In John 9.18 and again in 2 Thessalonians 2.11, as we covered in an earlier video. Uh, so contrary to Manton, <clears throat> the correct logical inference drawn from James 2.19 is that the word pistillo has a broader definition and is not limited to those narrow contexts where reliance is present. All eagles are birds, but not all birds are eagles. So all saving faith is faith, but not all faith is saving. Uh, so what is reliance if it is not an additional element in subjective believing? Clark argues that instead, reliance exists in context where certain terms are present in the object, in the declarative statement that you believe. So speaking of James 2, Clark says, <clears throat> but this is not, speaking of the demon's faith, this is not saving faith at all, and yet it is called faith and belief. The difference will be found in the object not in the psychological analysis. The analysis is the same whether a person believes a saving truth, a non-saving truth, or even a falsehood. So in Clark's definition, it is understanding and assent, not reliance, and that is always going to be the definition of the subjective, of subjective faith. It's always going to be just those two, not including this third, this third uh, element. So... So the subjective definition of believing doesn't change every time you have a new object. You know, if I believe I won the lottery, now you don't add exuberance to this as a third element. No, it's, it's, still, it's still the intellectual understanding that I won the lottery and accepting that it's true. It's going to be the same thing. And, and it, it, doesn't, it doesn't change every time you have a different object, every time you have a different declarative statement that you believe. Um, 
You know, but what is that additional term in the object where reliance is present? Uh, the great uh, Princeton theologian and later the founder of the OPC, founder of uh, Westminster Seminary, uh, J. Gresham Machen argue, argued that reliance is present uh, when the declarative statement is particularly applied to us and our self-benefit. Remember, we talked about that in the second video, that it's the particular application, particularly tailored to me, has to be applied to me. So here's, here is what uh, Manton says in his book, Christianity and Liberalism, on page 46. Uh, Trust can come only when the supreme person extends, I would say the word, I use the word apply because that's what lawyers use, but, uh, but extends his saving power to us. Anything written in red is my, is my writing. So, um, and he compares these two terms. Now, there, there was the earlier theologians in the early 1900s used this term historical faith uh, versus effective faith. And so here's, here's the difference between these two, uh, it's historical faith basically is, I believe that Columbus sailed the ocean blue in uh, eight, you know, 1492. That isn't reliance. There's no reliance in that. Uh, so, so basically, this is a couple of terms, and he's using terms, he's actually using verses from the Bible to show that in these situations, you don't have reliance. See, atheists believe that Jesus was crucified on the cross. That doesn't mean they rely on it for their salvation. So, okay, so so no reliance. He says, uh, these are these are examples of, of, of declarative statements, propositions that do not include reliance. He went about doing good. He spoke words such as never a man spoke. He is the expressed image of God. Now that that is, we will, an atheist might have reverence for Jesus, but that's not reliance. He particularly says that terms that include me and apply to me are where you get your issue of reliance. He loved me and he gave himself for me. So that's from uh, J. Gresham Machen identifies <clears throat> that the additional term required in having reliance is that we particularly apply particularly apply the word of God to me and my life, you know, so, uh, so Machen agrees with Clark that reliance is a difference in the object, specifically when the word is particularly applied to my self-benefit. This is where the rubber meets the Roman road. So this is where uh, I you apply it particularly to your own, right down to where you live, you particularly apply it to yourself. Uh, so just using another example, if I believe that the rope will hold a 180 pound sandbag over the cliff, no reliance. If I believe that the rope will hold a 180 pound me, reliance. And so, you know, if you wanted to, you couldn't exert Reliance, uh, I, I mean, of course, reliance is not something that you exert. I'm just saying it. I'm, 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 I'm arguing um, an absurd. Uh, if you wanted to exert reliance on the sandbag, you couldn't. It's, if it were an additional subjective element, why couldn't you just apply it to different things? No, but you can't apply it to those objects where your self-interest is not involved. And, uh, and likewise, um, you can't not have reliance if you understand an assent that the rope will hold me. You, you can't not have reliance. Uh, now, it, it, one, one important point I just want to make here before we go on that's getting a little bit aside, but understand that the object that we're talking about is not the rope. It is the statement, the rope will hold me. That's, that's the object of our faith. That's the, that's the belief. That's the objective belief. And this is, uh, if you think that the rope is the object, that's not the, that is not the object. That is the error that we're going to talk about when we discuss uh, uh, modernism, where the modernists try to take a single noun and put it in the object. And we're going to discuss that error in detail in a later video. But for now, we just want to say that, uh, that the issue of reliance is whenever you have your self-interest, me, 
being involved in the declarative statement being believed. Um, so, uh, now, so, just a couple other category errors I want to guard against before we move on. Uh, okay, so this is, this is detached. You know, when you believe a word of God, if I simply believe, yeah, Jesus died on the cross to save some people, that is not reliance. You don't have reliance in that. You have to say, oh, Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sins. Uh, so in this one, you're disinterested. And of course, this one involves your self-benefit. So, uh, and it's important to understand that we are not talking about subjective versus objective. We're talking, when we're talking about something being relative to me, we're, we have not become subjective. This is still a matter of objective truth. So if I believe, if I testify that Joe gave me, gave me $100, that's a matter of objective truth. If I lie about it, I, I can, you know, that's perjury. So if Joe gave me $100, that applies to me. Now, if Joe gave somebody else $100, I can still testify to it. It's still a matter of objective truth, though it's something that I'm disinterested in. It's not something that I'm interested in. It's But when Joe gives me $100, then it's something that I'm interested in. And just another, so another issue here is we don't want to try to say relativism, it being relative to me is relativism or some kind of subjectivism. No, it's relative to me is still a matter of objective truth. And we also want to guard against the error, which is very common, of people thinking that application means works. That, that when you say that something is particularly applied, you're saying that something is practically applied, that it includes the practice. Now we're going to show that uh, reliance is very closer, closely related to the effect of faith. In fact, it is an essential element in, a, in effective faith. But to keep the categories clear, application is not effects. It is not works. It is not uh, 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 the fruits of faith. It is, it is uh, 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 still a matter of objective truth. Okay. So, now I want to be clear. Just because Clark denies that reliance is an additional element in the definition of subjective believing does not mean that Clark denies the importance of, of reliance in the object. And we will discuss in, in the next video that reliance is vitally important. In fact, it is the difference between an effective faith and uh, a, a greasy grace antinomianism that a lot of people try to charge Clark with having, which is absolutely not true at all. So, uh, but for now, I want to discuss why it matters that we don't, I mean, later we're going to discuss why it's important that we have reliance, but for now, we're going to discuss why it matters that we don't try to add reliance to the definition of subjective believing. So I'm going to put a big X across here. Okay. All right. Get up my next slide. Okay. In the first place, and most importantly, the Bible uses the word pastillo in the broad sense, as we have shown, and we are to be true to the text. So the most important issue is that we do not distort the word of God. That is the primary issue. That is the ultimate issue. But now penultimate, of penultimate importance is the great doctrine of sola fide. Uh, the doctrine of sola fide, as we discussed, is the cornerstone of Western civilization, and we're to guard it closely. It's also, the, of course, the cornerstone of our eternal souls. So we don't want to smuggle in any additional imperatives into the definition of subjective believing by redefining the word non-biblically. See, because a lot of people, that's one of the tricks, and we're going to, when we get into the effects of faith, we're going to talk about that. That's one of the tricks that people do, is that they, they don't, they'll, still, they'll still affirm sola fide. Yes, we believe in sola fide by faith alone, but what they do is they redefine the word fide to include works. And that's what this is doing when you put, really what you're doing, you're, you're, when you put reliance, uh, when, when you take reliance out of the objective category, you're adding it as an additional imperative that you must perform. 
And so it really, uh, you know, so it, it, it is adding an additional term to faith and offends sola fide. And that's of extreme importance. Now, Clark also discussed about the fact that it's a matter, it, it makes things irrational. Uh, if a verb takes on a new meaning every time it has a new object, then it has no meaning at all. I remember there was a, uh, a clip in Monty Python where they had this word scrunge, and uh, this word scrunge was being used in a hundred, it just, it took on whatever meaning the person wanted it to mean. And it was kind of funny, you know, like coming, Johnson, did you finish the work that you had to do on the, on the, uh, on the project? And he would say, uh, scrunge, and the, and the boss would be great, you know, so any rate. So uh, if a word changes its meaning in every different sentence that it appears in, it has no meaning at all. It has nonsensical meaning. And so, and now also it's vague as to its meaning, but also it's vague as to extent. And this is something that you always see with works-based righteousness is you have to always ask the question, well, how much performance must I do? How much gripping of the rope must I do extra? How much, how much extra, extra reliance must I have? And so, um, so we're going to show in a later video how this does lead to a workspace righteousness. But for now, we just want to guard against this error of adding reliance to the subjective definition of believing and rather keeping it over here as as uh, um, J. Gresham Machen explained, as it being a matter of trust is when it's applied to me and my self-interest. And we'll talk about those things in the next video.